everybody. The month of March is here, and you know what that means. In the agriculture business, it's time to start planning. And uh, got the we're taping on March 11th, by the way, and got the first report. I actually saw it on Twitter uh, this morning that uh, some corn had been planted in Independence County. So, uh, you know, planting season has started in our area. I'd seen some reports, one or two reports from South Arkansas. Not a lot going on yet, but, uh, you know, planting season is officially here. So, uh, time to get busy for about six or seven months. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of rice topics today. Uh, first is both of them will be weed control related. I want to talk about uh, burn down herbicides and burn down situations. You know, we're take, talking mainly about rice, but we'll also mention soybeans and corn because, you know, used to we would plant rice and then wait a little bit before we plant our beans, but now we try to plant it about everything at once. So. Uh, we're going to have rice, beans, and corn all going on. So we're going to mention a little bit of weed control, uh, uh, burn down issues with all those crops, and then talk a little bit about rice weed control after that. <clears throat> Talking about burn down, you know, there's quite a bit of burn down herbicides already gone out. Uh, there's still more to go though. So uh, several things we can still talk about in relation to that with, you know, planning upcoming. Really when I, when I think about burn down situations, I talk about two general situations. One is that conventional tillage situation. You know, you're going to work the ground anyway before you plant, but you're wanting to try to hold that weed, weed uh, population down, you know, at least keep it manageable where, you know, the soil will dry out in a reasonable amount of time, then you can get it worked. You don't want it to get overgrown. When you do that, it's, you know, it's harder to, harder to work it and, uh, you know, it stays wet and things like that. So we're just wanting to try to keep the weed situation down. And I think a lot of cases like this, you can just go out with a good shot of Roundup you know, 32 to 40 ounces of Roundup maybe and uh, in these situations where you're going to do conventional tillage and you'll be just fine. You know, there's some weeds that Roundup's not that great on and, you know, in those situations uh, you're not going to get great control probably, but you'll get enough control where, where you, you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. The other situation is where we're using either minimum tillage or going no-till and in these situations you want to keep it clean. You want to clean that field up and you want to keep it clean. You don't really don't want any weeds or a very minimal amount of weeds to come out, come up and be there. So in this situation, we're looking at, you know, by still basing our herbicide program on Roundup most of the time, but we're going to put an uh, additional herbicide in there to control some of those other weeds maybe that Roundup's not so great on or could be resistant in and things like that. So we're going to add a, another herbicide to the Roundup really look at about three different choices in this situation. Number one is 2,4-D. It's a good broad spectrum herbicide, you know, that controls most broadleaf weeds. And earlier in our burn down window, that's what most people go to. But as we get long up into March, we've got to get concerned about plant back uh, intervals. Uh, you know, when can you plant your crops uh, after you put the 2,4-D out because it, it still has some soil activity, can affect emergence and things like that. So we do have a plant back interval. With 2,4-D for corn, it's only seven days, but it goes up for soybeans to 14 days, and the biggie for rice, it's 21 days. So, you know, as we get on up into March, and we've got to wait 21 days before we can plant, that's most farmers are not going to go for that. I mean, it may be 21 days. You know, if it stays wet, it may be a lot more than that before you plant. But, uh, you know, if, if the weather dries out at the right time and it's warm, you're going to want to plant a lot of times before 21 days is up. So we've got to keep that a concern. And, and usually we're going to quit, you know, using 2,4-D, you know, by now already because of that 21-day plant back. So we look at some herbicides that have some shorter intervals for plant backs. Uh, first shot is one that's pretty commonly used. There is no plant back for rice. So you can, you can put first shot out and right, you know, plant right behind that. So that's a good option for us. There is a little bit of a plant back with other crops with first shot, 14 days for corn and seven for soybeans. And another option that's a good option in this situation is sharpen. And uh, the plant back for rice and corn is zero days with sharpen. For soybeans, if you've really got some extremely sandy soil, probably sandier than what we've got in our area, then there's a 30 day plant back. But in general, we really don't have to worry that much about plant backs with the one ounce rate of sharpen. So in that situation, you know, we're usually pretty good to go as far as planting with sharpen. A lot of times I'll get the question, you know, I'll tell people, well, you can go first shot or sharpen. They say, well, try, you know, which one would be better? Well, it depends on your weed spectrum. Uh, I generally try to look at the weed spectrum. If you've got curly dock, it's pretty prevalent in your field, which we see on heavier soils sometimes, uh, then I think first shot's gonna be your best option. If you've got mare's tail out there, 
which is pretty common, mare's tail or horse weed, then uh, Sharpen's gonna be your uh, better option. It's gonna give you a quick burn down of that mare's tail. So again, depends on your weed spectrum, spectrum which one you're gonna wanna use. So, uh, but either one of those can be, can be very effective. They're both about the same price. So just, you know, maybe those, that one weed may make the difference, curly dog and or uh, mare's tail. So those are your options as far as, you know, trying to keep the uh, field clean before you plant. Another burn down situation we see sometimes is ryegrass. It seems to be more and more prevalent. You know, Roundup's, there's a lot of resistance to Roundup. Plus Roundup's just not a good herbicide on ryegrass anyway. So in this situation, if it's small ryegrass, uh, Generic Select or Section 3 is the product that we sell. Uh, is, is pretty good on smaller ryegrass. But there is a plant back with uh, uh, Clethodum or, or Section 3 or Generic Select. And, a lot of people don't believe that's real because we, we've only seen, you know, we only see that used as a post-emergence herbicide, but it does have soil activity. And I saw it in the real world last year, and believe me, it's very, very real when you see it. So you've got to adhere to that plant back for uh, generic select or section three if you're planting corn or rice, and it's a 30-day plant back. So, in, so you can see we're out of that window too. Uh, for soybeans, there is no plant back for this. So. Uh, Got to keep that in mind and stay away from that generic select if we're planting corn or rice and you know, we're still you know, we're within that 30 day window. <clears throat> so that leaves us pretty much with Paraquat or Gramoxone at that point. May take two shots of Paraquat or Gramoxone to take care of the ryegrass. Uh, it's not great on ryegrass, but it's the best we got. If you put one of those PS2 inhibitors, which is an additional herbicide that makes the uh, Paraquat work better, the Gramoxone work better, it gets it in the plant where it works better then you can add that. Uh, if you're planting, if you're going to plant corn, you could put atrazine in there and that'll, that's the PS2 that will help with that ryegrass control. If you're going to plant soybeans, you can put metribuzin in with that paraquat or gramoxone and that'll help with the activity of the uh, gramoxone. But for rice, there's no option like that. So you're strictly going to go straight paraquat, one or two shots and hopefully keep that uh, ryegrass beat back if you need to do something with it. If it's just scattered ryegrass, you know, not too bad. Maybe you don't have to do anything about it, but if you've got a significant population, then you're probably gonna have to look at one of these choices. Wanna switch quickly to uh, more uh, in-season, uh, you know, rice weed control. Uh, I've mentioned this in the past, you know, years about taking resistant samples of barnyard grass and having them tested by the University of Arkansas for resistance to various herbicides. Uh, just looking over my results from the last couple of years uh, here in the last few days, and uh, I've, I've sent off 15 samples of barnyard grass. This is from three different counties in the farmer supply footprint, Jackson, Poinsett, and Cross counties. There's some samples from all three of these counties. And I just want to uh, give you the results uh, on which uh, herbicides the, uh, that uh, the barnyard grass is resistant to. Uh, Propanel, 10 of the 15 samples were, had resistance. Facet, nine of the 15 samples had resistance. New Path, six of the 15 samples were resistant to New Path. Loyant, uh, five of the samples were resistant to Loyant. Clencher, three of those, uh, three out of the 15 samples were resistant to Clencher. So you can see we've got quite a bit of, uh, you know, resistance. We know it's there and this just documents that, that, you know, what we already know pretty much is we've got resistance to these herbicides. Uh, interestingly, uh, only one of these samples had any level of resistance to Roundup, and, and it wasn't totally resistant. We got 60% control on the, with Roundup on, on one of the populations of barnyard. The rest of them were 80 plus percent. So, you know, that's not a big issue with these samples. And I know there's getting to be some problems with that, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, in these samples, we didn't really see an issue. A couple of other weeds I sent off, uh, a couple of fields I sent red rice samples off for new path resistance. One of those came back resistant, the other one was okay. And I've got one smart weed sample that I've sent off uh, last uh, fall and still haven't got the results. Apparently when they try to grow it out for spraying, it flowers almost immediately and they've been having a hard time getting it sprayed on a timely way. But uh, they're looking for resistance to Permit Plus and Gambit because we just haven't been able to get control in this particular field uh, uh, with uh, Permit Plus or Gambit, and they're usually pretty good on smart weeds. So, you know, they're looking at that, and uh, I, I feel pretty confident they'll come back as resistant, and that's going to be a big issue if, if that would happen to be true and it does start spreading, so we're concerned about that. 
So with these results, I mean, where do we go from here? I think the big thing, and we've talked about this for the last several years, we've got to keep our barnyard grass from ever emerging. And once it emerges, it's, it's difficult to control, not only with the resistance, but you know, conditions and, and getting it sprayed right and timely and that kind of thing. We've just got to be able to, you know, keep these, uh, keep the, uh, the barnyard grass from ever emerging. So we've got to rely on, on residuals. So that's what we've got to base everything on is just uh, incorporating residuals into our program, overlapping them. Don't ever let them run out until, you know, you're flooded up. And a lot of times that's going to take probably three different applications uh, to get that done. And I know several fields I looked at last year, we went with three different residual applications. Of course, basing that on command, but also incorporating uh, Prowl and Blaro in there with them. Facet as well, even though we've got the facet resistance, a lot of times we'll get, we can get pre-emerge control out of the facet. Now I've got some farmers that tell me they get nothing out of facet anymore on barnyard grass, so I think it's maybe a mixed bag there, but uh, still a lot of times we can get some residual control out of the facet. So let's look at, you know, again, basing everything around command, starting with command, unless it's cut ground or very sandy ground where you can't use the command. Let's start with command, let's overlap something with command and, and make another overlap after that. Don't let, ever let the residual run out, uh, you know, until the time that the field is flooded. So that's kind of what we need to be doing uh, with our uh, rice weed control specifically, the barnyard grass. One other thing on residuals or with our rice is, uh, you know, annual sedge, the uh, flat sedge and other annual sedges are becoming more and more of a problem in, uh, in rice. We have the ALS, ALS resistance, so some of the herbicides we used to use like Permit and, and, and some other uh, ALS herbicides don't work on the uh, annual sedges or flat sedges anymore, so we've got to look at some other control options. One pre that has shown pretty good activity is, uh, is a Sharpen. Uh, BASF recommends three ounces of Sharpen. Just mix that with your command in your pre-emerge situation and that'll help fight off that, uh, that annual sedge and, uh, and hopefully get you off to a good start there because the, you know, we've got some post-emerge options, but again, like anything else, it'd be better if it never came up, you know, you had to worry about controlling it uh, post-emerge. So that's kind of where we're at now, a planning season underway and uh, hopefully by the next time, uh, we visit. I'll be able to go out in the field and look at some crops emerging. We were going to be in the field today, but the wind's blowing about 40 miles an hour out there, so we just decided to tape inside. So uh, until next month, this has been Randy Klopechka with your Farmer Supply Association Agriculture Report for March.